Okay, good morning. Um, today I'm going to be doing um, upgrade to the pond. Cut a long story short, over the last couple of weeks um, I've been developing issues that I couldn't identify um, within the main pond. Um, I had fish jumping, I thought it was flukes, so I treated them, scraped them, um, found a couple of flukes on them. Um, obviously, I treated it for flukes. Um, did a test further down the line. No evidence, no evidence that I could physically see that the microscope was costier or trick or anything like that. The fish was still jumping. Um, then I had a problem where I had a number of fish develop, that developing sores. Absolutely freaking me out. Um, still couldn't work out what it was. Ident identified the chance that it was a bacterial issue. So what I did then was I completely empty the pond, I mean absolutely, there was nothing left in it. Um, treated the entire pond with 10 times a uh, mixture of verca, scrubbed everything down, absolutely everything, sanitised pumps, pipes, filters, absolutely everything. Um, lost a few fish uh, while I was in the quarantine tank, so I want to I won't be a colourful, but on a very upset scale of 1 to 10, I was probably about a 15. Lost a big sanker, a big shower. Lost me at server as well, so I, I really got to me quite badly. Um, lost big mama. Um, I lost a few fish. Went down to, um, prior to that, um, went down to Seabro. Rob turned around and says, uh, John Sam, you've got a biological uh, bacterial related issue. Um, hence why I've emptied it and cleaned it and burnt on it. Um, gave me some treatments. Massive thank you to Rob because um, he gave me some sedates, um, iodine type stuff, um, multiple bits and pieces. And he went, here, yeah, get that sorted. Come back to me later when you've done your deal. Um, to be fair, um, nine fish that are treated are all back to normal, um, which is fantastic. Um, one thing that I am experimenting with now, um, and everything's about experimentation by the way, um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Obviously I genuinely don't know what happened. I do know that I... Uh, Acquired some fish from a, a source, um, and then later found out that, that source was um, the best, shall we say. But I'll take that on the it is what it is. Um, at the time as well, I wasn't prepared for the um, quarantine tank because I've got fish already that was in the quarantine tank in the first place. Um, and obviously I was in the process of trying to get the main pond of the top garden built, so I was rushing to get that done as well. Then these fish came in, and then I had a problem in the main pond. So then basically I ripped all the fish out of the main pond, got them all into quarantine tank. But prior to doing that, took all the fish out of the quarantine tank, put them in the pond at the top of the garden. A couple of schoolboy errors that I made is using the same net um, and a few other bits and pieces. I then tra transferred the issue to the bundle top of the garden. Very expensive um, learning experience, um, but it's absolutely devastated me. Um, which is why it's so really, really important that any fish that you get from anywhere. Um, Make sure you quarantine them properly. If you haven't got a quarantine facility or you haven't got a quarantine tank, don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. It's as simple as that. Because the chances are, I'm not saying I'm going to try and be careful in how I say this, but I am going to say it's exactly how it is. You can have the most perfect, perfect, perfect scenario where everything is 100% perfect. And then you could end up getting some skanky fish. You don't know it. 
you didn't realise it, you can go anywhere and pick them up. It happens. You think, oh great, I'm all right. I ain't got nothing. It'll be fine. Fantastic facility that they've got. We'll chuck them in there. It'll be brilliant. You put them in yours, and they could have a bacteria issue. And I think that's what happens with me. Um, I'm still learning, same as everybody else. It's been a very, very expensive um, experience for me. Probably was lost in the region of about two and a half grams worth of fish. Um, so yeah, it's been devastating. But onwards and upwards. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to upgrade all my filtration. I'm going to upgrade some of my filtration um, within my main pond. Um, I've managed to get a easy pod um, through Rob Walker. So again, massive shout to Rob Walker for sorting that out. Um, during the easy pods now, so an easy pod that's less than 12 months old will come with the system already ready to go. There'll be no UV in there, but it'll be all ready to, all, all ready to go. There ain't that much difference in price between an easy pod with a UV built in um, and buying a retrofit uh, UV to go with it. But again, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to turn you around and I'm going to show you what my plan is today. So, at the moment we've got that one there. So, that's going to stay. That's doing exactly what it says in the tin and I'm more than happy with that. Again, when I get round to it, I am going to put the bog filter in there. I've just got that much going on at the moment, so I'm struggling to do it. The vacuum shower there, I'm going to be keeping. So that's going to be staying there as well. There is a pressure filter that's in there. That's going to be decommissioned today and I'm going to use that as an emergency facility so that'll be decommissioned. I'm going to put over there, I'm going to put a frame that's going to sit in that corner and then I'm going to sit an easy pod that's going to sit on top of that and then the easy pod will come straight into the water. I've bought a new um, Evolution Aqua 20,000 variable pump so I've got one that's going to sit in in there, which is the bottom part of that pond there. So there is uh, 20,000 sitting in there. And I'm going to put a 20,000 that's going to be sitting up there. So what will happen then is that pond will then come through under the back of, under the back of the back of the shower and will go back round into the easy pod and then come straight back out. That will only be fitted in there on a temporary basis. Um, and the reason for that is obviously next year this is going down deeper so I don't want to start spending a massive amount of money if I don't need to but obviously I'm going to use the variable pumps so then come the winter I can then turn them down and control them so um, I'm going to start getting myself set up I'm going to go over to Selco and get some um, Pulby 2 timber um, I'm going to show you my version of how I set up all the timber um, and then I'm going to show you uh, screwing it down, setting it up. Hopefully, I'm going to then be able to show you the Easy Pod in. I don't think I'll be able to get it fully installed today, and that might be in a part two possibly. I'm going to show you how to do a retrofit um, UV into the Easy Pod. But you should actually turn around and say, um, we're doing, you're doing some bits and pieces. Have a look at this try this, see what you can do, see if it benefits, then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled, I'm humbled. it's as simple as that, so, um, hope I can do you proud, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, I'm going to get a few things, bits and pieces set up, um, and I'll get back to you in a bit. So the way that I'm going to do this now, I'm going to set this up by running a line underneath this side, and a line underneath the other side, so, uh, Bear with me a second. So what I'm going to do... So, coming back to this side, you can now see that I've put a mark on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it up in such a way that there'll be three. There'll be one sitting there, one sitting in the middle, and then one sitting over there. I'm going to run a piece of frame inside there, so it sits flat, and then I'm going to sit the chamber on top of it. I might have to make a modification that'll be further down the line um, but if I do I'll have a look at that. You can see the water is absolutely crystal clear but 
still had an issue so I still need to deal with it so I'll get back to you in a minute so as you can see I've got the first few in there to identify where I am this one ain't uh, this one over here ain't, uh, ain't here permanently at the moment because I've just got to measure it all out um, but basically what I'll do is I've set them up so I can get them in there and I'll put another two here and then I'll put a gap in between each one of about four mil and the reason for that is obviously when we have when the weather changes with expands and contracts so what I want to do is make sure that I've got a gap in between so if it does contract I've still got a gap that's how I'm going to do it um, so I haven't bought enough timber so I've got to go back to soccer so I'll catch her in a bit so basically as I said with the gaps I'm going to uh, continue that theme all the way across I've just used a simple gauge to be fair all I've done is I've just used a pencil so the pencil will sit in between the gaps and seal the gaps up I've left these a little bit more open for the simple reason is I need some air to get into this side but obviously that one will sit there with a the gap in and then I've got to continue it to the end of there and then I'll be cutting that piece off to make it level I'll put a piece in there to hide it as well so that'll look pretty decent so uh, get back to you in a minute so that's the frame in now so I'm not really interested in this because I'll be able to cut that off in a minute what I'm more interested in is when you're looking at it from this side that needs to be right which is what it is so bear in mind I've done this quite rough you know, excuse me walking around so that's what it's going to look like and then obviously I'm going to possibly put a piece of trim over the top of it in a bit but I'll have a ply um, and I'll get back to you in a bit and then what I'll do is I'm going to put the easy pod on the top now to see what it looks like I'll catch you in a sec so that's how the easy pod's going to sit um, I'll have some modifications to do because what I'm going to do is that is going to be the uh, empty out so I'm going to have to do that so in such a way that it comes and it feeds the plants down here so I'll probably hard fit that down into there, make that nice and tidy. Um, as you can see, I've retrofitted that on the top. Um, I will show you how to do that a little bit further down the line. It's just that I'm trying to put this in first and then show the other bits because I've got another one of these at the top of the garden that I've got to retrofit as well. So I'll show you that in a bit. Let me get this set up um, and I'll get back to you. So what I'm doing, well I've got a chance now, is connect the waste. What will happen with that, hopefully it will come down, come into these plants. I've also connected up the pipe that's going to go in, around the back of the back of shower. It's going to then come through the pump, into a filter, into a splitter. It will split into the back of shower and then come in, back into here. That's the way that I'm going to set that up. So then I'll have that plus I'll have the Bio 600 so I'll have plenty of filtration and because it's all new now hopefully it's going to take all my problems over um, but once I've got all this set up um, also I've got to fit that onto the end of there as well so once I've got that done um, I'll get back to you so looking at it now I've got that set up there nicely now I've got the um, cleaning it out on the valve that comes now into the flower bed which is what I wanted to do so that comes into the flower bed now so hopefully we should get some decent plants out of here that now is rooted around there it's connected up across there with some clips and then that'll be running right down the back and then that'll be split up down there I apologize for it being a mess down here at the moment but it's all work in progress trying to get it sorted so uh, Obviously I'll get that. I'm going to put a power supply down here. I'll put a power supply down here so that I'll feed the UV. Um, and I've got a few more bits and pieces to do. So I'll get back to you in a bit. So that's all the media in there now. Um, and I've put enough water in there at the moment because as you can see there's floating elements. There's also floating elements over there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this soaking for a couple of hours. Um, and then I'm going to drain it off and then once I've drained it off once I've drained it off then I'm going to get it up and running um, I'm going to hoover out the pond as well get all that nice and clean 
Um, I'm going to um, clean the bio chamber as well while I'm here. Just get everything nice and tidy, ready to go. Um, and then hopefully we'll come back later. Um, hopefully watch and see this get up and running. Um, I'll uh, also install the UV um, later as well. I'll show you how to do that as well. Uh, catch you in a bit. So I'm just going to show you how retrofit system comes, so I'll just quickly show you that. So retrofit system comes like this. It does come with a UA plugger, but it's just a matter of cutting that off and sticking a three pin plugger. That's the transformer that goes in there. And obviously then you've got the UV that sits. So you've got the um, glass and then obviously you've got the UV that sits inside that. The way the new systems work, I'm just going to walk down there and show you. So. so the new systems, I've got a screw piece on top of it. So any of the systems that have been bought in the last 12 months will come with something that looks like this. So it actually says it's UV ready. So basically all you do is you unscrew that. Really simple. Then in there then, you have a chamber. In that chamber, it just fits inside. Oh, well, what I'll do, I'll set that up now, give me two seconds and I'll be back. So I'm on my own, so bear with me. So if I'll just quickly unscrew this and show you. So there's the UV sitting inside there. Look, it's actually retrofitted straight in. All you do then, is quite literally tighten that down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you later because um, the other part of the other retro kit comes with this and comes with the shaft that sits inside here um, and then obviously it screws into the top with the tank connector on the top um, and I'll drill all that out and I'll show you how to do that further down the line so uh, we'll keep going at it and I'll uh, catch you in a bit so we've got it up and running now um, so I'll just show you that as you can see that's up and running the reason why I have got that there is obviously I've washed out all the micro but there are still bits of plastic that are still in there even though I've washed it so what that's for now is just to make sure that none of the plastic gets into the water um, and I'll leave that like that for a couple of days now probably um, so I've got to go and do some more bits and pieces electrical wise um, but Fish seem to be up Fish seem to be loving it to be fair. Uh, but let's see what happens. I've got to clean that out and I've got to sort some other bits and pieces out. And I want to put some bacteria in there as well. So now uh, here's all just give more bits and pieces. Um, it's 11 o'clock. So I've been at it since about half past five this morning to be fair. But well, I've got to get it done. It's as simple as that. Um, and I'm at work tomorrow. So the sooner I can get this up and running and the sooner I'm happy with this, the better it is for me to be fair. So uh, catch you later.